So welcome back, everybody. Many questioning the future of our education system due to recent teacher resignations. Joining us now, Minister of Education, the Honorable uh, Favor Williams, joining us to talk about, well, let's start with yesterday. Good morning, Minister. Good morning. Good morning. Thank how you things started me. out. First yes. day out, how did we do? Um, it started smoothly. Um, as you know, traditionally, during the first week of September, um, primarily our primary schools that are back in full force, whereas our high schools, um, they stagger the return to school. So you'll find some schools only having back grade seven and eight. Mm -hmm. And then, the, you know, the next day they'll have a different class and so on. It's because they do a more in-depth, a more elaborate, um, you know, back to school orientation for parents and students. Remember, this is high school. Sure. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Um, so you would not expect to see all students back just yet in the system. I think next week will be a better test in terms of the number of students. Mm -hmm. what, about, what about the physical infrastructure? Because I know sometimes when the schools open, I haven't heard a lot of that this year, which is why I'm asking. Schools would say we don't have enough furniture, we need to fix this, we need to fix that. But it seems like pretty much everybody is okay. Right. Um, we've been trying harder mm -hmm. um, to ensure that we're earlier in the school year and providing what schools have asked for. Mm -hmm. um, is there perfection out there in the system? No, but it's a continual work that we do to provide furniture, to provide textbooks, to provide the resources that schools need. Um, it's ongoing, mm -hmm. it's just simply ongoing. If any challenges yesterday, what would they have been? Did you hear of any? So smoothly for the most part, but any challenges at all reported? Um, not at the schools that I visited, uh, not, well, I should say it's furniture is yeah. still, right, still, mm -hmm. still a complaint out there, but we are continuing to deliver mm -hmm. to schools because remember, we have 15 of our own schools that make furniture or yeah. repair the furniture. Mm -hmm. So, you know, <laughs> it yeah. takes time for them to, to turn out as much as they on. But we will continue to deliver okay. our schools. Well, Minister, boy, oh boy, <laughs> we're going to the hot topic because I, I know that you had indicated a number of teachers that had resigned at a particular point of the year, but then at the end of August, that number uh, kind of just shot right up. Mm -hmm. um, do you know why? that spike happened? Well, in, in terms of just when you, when you speak with persons in the sector, mm -hmm. um, one thing they say, that's how it's always been, um, teachers wait until the, the end of August mm. to put in their resignation, despite the fact that it is a law, it's in the education regulation, that if you're a permanent teacher, you must give three months notice. notice. So yeah. that's something we were trying to talk through with the president of the principals and what's that association, Linvern Wright yesterday. Mm -hmm. We were asking him what the protocols were as far as the resignations are concerned and what the contract or appointment letter, whatever it is, says about what happens if you breach that. But we were told that, yes, this is something that happens every year, is there no measure in place to, to deal with it, to counteract it, to prevent it? Well, in the current laws that exist, um, when I read it, all I see in there is that you may be guilty of professional misconduct, mm. um, but nothing further than that. As we amend, as we look to amend the Education Act and regulation, um, we should look at that. It is destabilizing for the system. I don't know that if I look across the public sector that we see that same behavior in the public sector. Um, obviously, we cannot prevent teachers from making their personal decision about you know, where, what country or location or they, they give their mm -hmm. services. But at the very least, you know, if you're going to resign, give due notice as per the law. Um, I do not know of any teacher who would lose salary if they say I'm resigning in the next three months. It, it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things I feel is that even if we have um, physical bodies to replace the ones that have left at the very least, um, to bring them through our orientation process and get them acclimatized to their new school environment, still will would have a, a, a period during school that's a little bit anxious for both them, students, teachers. So it is destabilizing. Right. So we'd, we'd love the time, yeah. you know, the notice period for principals and boards to be able to go through an interview process and bring on new teachers. Yeah. Uh, so obviously, just giving a day's 
notice or not even a day's notice, it's going to cause, mm -hmm. you know, some ripples. So the what's sector. the fix? We've heard of um, the recruitment of new teachers, the bringing out of retirement of older right, teachers. Right, so those are... Sixth form students who um, don't win uh, That was not our idea. Um, but the strategies that we've laid out, that we put on paper, um, includes bringing back retired teachers uh, up to yesterday. At one of the schools I visited, there was a teacher there who is, um, will be going on retirement. And I said to her, do you know you could keep working if you, if you would like to? And she was pleasantly surprised. She says, wow, I didn't know that that could happen. And I said, yes, you know, mm -hmm. we, are, we have allowed our boards to um, make offer to those who are going off to say, you can. And as you know, now um, somebody on reaching 60 or 65, they're still quite, yes. you know, yeah, quite competent. Of course, mm -hmm. absolutely. And teachers who've retired since 2018, we've also said you can invite those teachers back. Mm -hmm. Are you getting a lot of interest from them? Um, when I responses? speak with principals, we are additionally, as you know, every year teachers go off on their long leave, some teachers and a, a number of teachers whether it's four months or eight months, we've also said those teachers can come back and be their own replacement if they so choose. Mm -hmm. And the report I'm getting that they're seeing a good a lot, There's a lot of uptake. Yeah. Um, I've, I've heard that you have a job portal. Yes. Yes, tell me a little bit about that. Yes, it was recently launched, um, <clears throat> first ever in the education sector, specifically aimed at um, uh, making it more efficient for schools to advertise their vacancies and for those looking to come into the sector to really find the school and to get to know something about the school because we are encouraging schools to just profile themselves mm -hmm. um, on it as well. Um, it can, if for anybody who is watching, listening, it can be accessed at um, jobs.moey.gov.jm. So jobs at moey.gov.jm. Mm -hmm. Yes, excellent. So that's just a one stop. You can go in and find where the vacancies are. Right, and once and you, you can qualify, upload you can upload your, your, your resumes as well. It makes it easier um, for when you have the information all in one place mm -hmm. for the seeker to find. Yes, yes. yes. I yes. can't believe we're out of time. We have so many I know. more things I to know. discuss, but we, we have to go. But I'm glad at least that we got through some of the important things that you wanted to discuss. Um, thank you so much. for. Thank you for having me and for your continual interest in the education sector. Of course, yeah. of course, of course. That's how we're going to move this nation forward. Minister of Education, the Honorable Favor Williams with us this morning. What's up next? Your child is not your pension. I'm going to preach that <laughs> until forever. Uh, so coming up next, we want to discuss how do you set up your pension? Listen, come.